All right, let's talk about abundance, species richness, and diversity, and why understanding the difference between these terms is important. So abundance, it is the total number of organisms or individuals in an area. It does not matter what species they are. Species richness is the number of different species in an area, and it does not matter how abundant they are. Diversity is going to incorporate both the number of species in an area and the evenness of their abundances. So let's look at what that means. So here in Community A, you've got a bunch of bird species. And you can count them all up to find out the abundance. If you count them all up, you'll see there are 10 organisms, 10 individuals. So that is the abundance. The species richness, though, is going to be four. And that is because you have this sort of kiwi-type species, a chickadee, these blackbirds that all seem to be one species, and then a secretary bird. Now the diversity itself, we're going to leave as a question mark. I'm going to show you how to calculate that in just a second. Now if we compare to this other community, community B, we can see that we have the same abundance. There are 10 individuals here. And we have the same species richness, which is four. But you can get a sense that it's a little bit more balanced and even in terms of the number of individuals of each species. So because of that, we would think that the diversity will be a little higher. But again, let me show you that. So this is the calculation, and don't be overwhelmed by the formula, for something known as the Shannon Diversity Index, which is denoted by the letter H. The formula is H equals the negative sum of the proportion of individuals in each species multiplied by the natural log of the proportion of individuals in each species. So again, it's a little bit overwhelming perhaps, but let's just look at this table and I think it'll be really clear. Blackbird, there were seven of them in that first community A, and because there were 10 individuals total, the proportion of individuals that were blackbirds was 0 0.7. The natural log of that is negative 0.51, and that multiplied by the proportion itself, again, is negative 0.31. If you do this for each bird and then sum up that total, you get to negative 1.00. And again, because there's a negative here, that actually will become a positive, and your Shannon diversity index is 1.00. It's not always exactly 1, um, but it just happened to be that way in this case. So community one, we plug in 1.00. Let's go back to uh, community A now. I mean, sorry, community B. So in community B, we had a blackbird with an abundance of two and a kiwi with three, secretary bird at three, chickadee with two. So it's a little more balanced. Here's the proportions. Here's the multiply by the natural, uh, the natural log of those proportions. And here's the product of that. And the total is negative 1.37, so that means the Shannon Diversity Index is 1.37, and we can plug that in here. So when you look at this, it really shows you that even though the abundance and species richness is the same for both of these communities, um, the Shannon Diversity is the metric, the one metric that's really going to show you that Community B is a little more diverse than Community A. So why this matters, a couple of quick examples. Urban areas often have higher bird abundance due to things like pigeons um, that reach super high abundances in the city. Um, but they have lower overall diversity than less developed landscapes. So if you just looked at abundance or if you just looked at species richness, it wouldn't tell the whole story. Same with corals in the Caribbean. Elkhorn coral is a type of hard coral that has become pretty rare. And because it's rare, it's still there. It still contributes to species richness. Um, but it, the diversity itself has decreased as it's become less abundant and a more small portion of the total. So anyway, I hope this has been useful, and take care.